Season 2 of the Total Drama Reboot is finally over. And hallelujah for that. Um, it's been a very wild ride, and I'm sure you guys um, enjoyed the ups and downs of it. You know, um, I'm not sure what the general fan consensus of the season is. There's lots of complaints, okay? I mean, there's always complaints. The complaints usually come first. Um, but personally, I really didn't like the season um, that much. I think I'd have to rewatch it to really put my um all of my thoughts in the, oh, into a full perspective and um i'm pretty sure after making this video i'll try to work on a full review of the season that's a bit more in depth but today we're just going to be a tier list um we're just going to do a tier list for the characters um and this is only for season two so this doesn't take into account what they did in season one only season two and um sadly there are going to be even three characters in the bottom tier which is the hate tier and the tiers are pretty self-explanatory but you know um these last five episodes that just got released that I actually watched on my birthday. Happy birthday to me. This was a um, great birthday present. <laughs> um, uh, a character actually moved down to hate tier when they were just in like the middle tier before. So that's great. Um, I'm not going to be ranking them right away like I did um, in my very first video. Flashback to that. Um, but I'll just do it whenever I want to talk about them. So first I will talk about Millie, who I'm going to put in the dislike tier. Now, Millie is actually one of my favorites from season one, and so I was really, really sad um, to see her in this season. Um, I assumed that she wasn't really going to have much of a story arc before the season was released. Um, I didn't think she would have much of an arc or much of a story, and that she was going to be an early boot, and that she wasn't going to do much, but I was completely fine with that because I felt like her arc was pretty much completed in this season, and now in this season, we just need to see her be happy with Priya, and then she can get voted off, or she can quit, like, whatever, you know? Um, and I know that there are... Uh, I'm pretty sure the minority that actually kind of liked Millie's storyline this season, and I did think she was kind of cute this season, but <laughs> in a weird way, but that's just because, like, I feel so bad for her, like, she's such a girl flop, <laughs> she's a girl failure, um, just like Michelle, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so yeah, basically, what happens with Millie is that um, in the very first episode, she's like, I didn't read Priya's book that she gave me, and, you know, that pissed me off right away. <laughs> uh, I know some people could just see this as a throwaway line, but to me, I was like, girl, you didn't read her damn book. And listen, I would probably, <laughs> I probably wouldn't read the book that much either. Uh, you could have at least skimmed it, you know, especially because she's like really academic, obsessed with books and stuff anyways. So like, why wouldn't you read it? Um, and then the, the actual bad part is that she lied to Priya about it. She didn't read it. And then, and you know, it, <laughs> she could have redeemed herself after that episode one performance, but then it just kept getting worse and worse. Like she went, I feel like there was a hint. I, I don't know. I at least appreciate that the writers were trying to do something with Millie because I appreciate that they were trying to like have her do well in the challenges, but I feel like her story here just almost completely reversed everything about the first season, about her learning to be a good friend. And um, I already talked about some of my other thoughts concerning Millie just in the episode one video, and she only lasted two more episodes. So um, really, I do have to say her elimination was pretty dumb. <laughs> she didn't really get to explain herself or redeem herself uh, to any of her teammates. And, um, yeah, it just, she doesn't seem like a very good friend to Priya, and I feel like that one scene where she apologizes to Damien, I felt it was really, I guess, forced is the word, like, or I felt like Millie was really fake. I was like, okay, so every time Millie does something horrible, she's gonna do this freaking speech where she's like, I'm so sorry for what I did, <laughs> and she's gonna pull out those puppy eyes, and I'm like, Millie, Millie, just give it up, like, <laughs> maybe you should try to actually give it up. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like that apology was like, okay, here we go again. <laughs> it's like a YouTuber apology. <laughs> it was giving YouTuber notes app apology. Millie's apology to Damien. Um, so yeah, I really didn't like Millie this season. She wasn't completely horrible, because like, honestly, I just felt bad for her. Um, and she literally tried to kill Damien when she could have just sent him down the one point slide, and then she herself could have gone for a three point, and they still would have won the challenge. Um, so yeah, she's kind of psychopathic for that. Um, at least she seems to be doing happy in the finale, I guess, but um, I probably talk about this a little bit more when I talk about Priya, but Millie and Priya, like, don't even seem like friends <laughs> anymore. Um, the first three episodes focus on them quite a bit, uh, but then after Millie gets eliminated, Priya, like, never mentions her again, I'm pretty sure, and then someone even has a screenshot of her in the finale where Millie and Priya aren't sitting next to each other, or they are, but they're, like, <laughs> you know, really far apart, like, Priya's with Caleb, and so it's just like, I feel like Millie, I feel like, <laughs> this might be dramatic, but I really feel like she was ruined this season, I don't know. I probably ranted enough, but hopefully I actually got my thoughts across well. Um, da -da -da. I should probably talk about a character I actually kind of like, I don't know. 
we'll go with Axel. Um, I she could be in the bottom of good, but I'm just gonna put her in decent or average. Um, one I um, okay, so Axel is one of the most anticipated characters for this season two, and I was also really looking forward to her. Um, because I felt like there were a lot of plots they could do with her, and I think she is really entertaining, because um, Eva from the original Total Drama Island, I really felt like she could have been in this season and could have done well, because I feel like she's really, really funny, and um, Axel's kind of like the same thing. I feel like Axel's really, really funny, and her voice acting is just perfect. So in this season, I still thought she was really funny. Like, every line she had was comedic gold. Like, the delivery was perfect. Um, but I really wish they could have given her a plot, because I felt like they could have done more. Uh, because in this, they just make her Ripper's girlfriend, and that's it. Um, that's really all she has going for her. I'm not sure she has any meaningful interactions with anyone besides Ripper. And so that's kind of upsetting, because um, I'm actually in the middle of watching Revenge of the Island. <laughs> I, I watched like the first six episodes of Revenge of the Island before, um, before the last batch of episodes got dropped. And um, I'm not the biggest fan of Revenge of the Island or its cast, but one thing I do have to say is they do a really good job uh, with character interactions. I feel like all the characters on the team, you know, feel like they know each other and have some sort of dynamic, or at least you could be like, um, like Anne Maria for say, you could be like, <laughs> what does Anne Maria think of Brick, or what does she think of Cameron? And even though she doesn't have that many interactions with them, you could still say like, well, Anne Maria <laughs> doesn't really like Brick because she doesn't think he's attractive. Um, but at least she still sees him as a good guy, and she does seem to like Cameron. Um, that's just a random example, because Anne Maria is not like a super, super important character, and yet she still has meaningful interactions and feels like she knows all of her teammates, you know? Uh, I can't say the same with a character like Axel, who has the same amount of episodes as Anne Maria. Um, they wrote the Lenny in episode 7, I think. And so, yeah, that's one problem with this season in general, is the interactions are kind of bare. And they kind of stick to like one or two other characters, whereas uh, a season like Revenge of the Island, they do a really good job of having the characters interact. Um, even though I feel like in this season, I I kind of like the gimmicks or like the ideas of the characters in this season more. And um, yeah, even though I didn't really like this season, I'm not like trying to be negative or hate on it for like clout or whatever, or because it's like popular. Because um, I feel like some people might accuse me of that, but um, I really went into the season with a positive spin because I really liked the first season of the reboot you know I'm not a hater of this cast I felt like they had a lot of potential and um it's not even just that they didn't love it, live up to my potential because you know if a character doesn't live up to your potential it's just that you know they're not bad um but I feel like some of the routes they took with these characters is like the worst possible <laughs> option like Millie um even Priya but um yeah anyways getting back to Axel she didn't have any plots or anything. She was just Ripper's side piece. She did have funny lines, but I really felt like she could have been so much more. Um, I would have liked to see her open up and at least have a friend in the competition, because she said in the first one that she was going to try and do that, uh, try and make friends. Uh, but she failed at that, and then she still really closed off during her elimination. So I don't know. I just wanted to see some growth from Axel, and I don't really think she's like a huge fan favorite from this season, so I think people will agree. Um, but yeah, let's just move on to someone... Okay. I should, I'll move on to who I want to put in the hate tier. Who should I rant about first? I'll rant about Nichelle. Um, so Nichelle was a flop in this season, but in a completely different way. Um, and I know this this is an unpopular opinion as well. Not necessarily that she was pretty underwhelming or even bad in the season, because I have seen that floating around, and I'm kind of glad because Nichelle had a really big fan base for a while, um, and I think she still might have like a really dedicated fan base, um, mostly just based on her design and what she could be. Um, but you have to admit that what we have in these two seasons is awful, and I personally think that she is the worst character from this reboot. Um, she definitely has competition, but I think she's the worst because... Um, oh, but my unpopular opinion, <laughs> I literally... Okay, it's midnight right now, so I'm having a peanut brain moment. Um, but what I was going to say earlier is my unpopular opinion when it comes to Nichelle is that um, I think she was actually better in season one. <laughs> She was literally better in season one, because at least in season one, she had that, like, whole really memorable, like, <laughs> flip-out scene where she was a drama queen, and that was really funny. But in season two, she's just nothing. Like, I'm sure you've already heard people complain about Michelle, but she just comes, she wins challenges, she's kind of Mary Sue-ish, and um, it's not like she's even good in the challenges in a creative way, like B from Revenge of the Island. She just, like, she just leaps over everything, and she's really athletic. It's like, okay, we've seen this a million times. And so she's basically like Sky, except I would say she's even worse than Sky because at least Sky 
has something, <laughs> you know? At least Sky has interaction with characters, even if it's not that many, you know? She interacts with Dave and Sugar, I guess. <laughs> I guess. That's as good as it gets. Um, but yeah, Nichelle, she flopped, and um, she wasn't really funny this season. And then her elimination um, was just, like, <laughs> really out of a sudden. Like, you know, in the start of episode five, she gets in beef with Julia, and, you know, everyone cheered. <laughs> everyone cheered. They were finally like, okay, Nichelle's actually going to do something. She could have a rivalry with Julia. Um, but that gets... I also had a sinking feeling in my stomach <laughs> in the beginning of episode five, because I was like, okay, Nichelle is going to get eliminated right away, isn't she? <laughs> because Julia's going to be mad at her. Um, I wish they would have saved that for Merge, at least. Um, but it is what it is, and, you know, I really just don't understand why they took this route with her. The only thing I think... The only thing I can think of is they came up with this character concept, and then they were like, no one's going to like Nichelle, <laughs> so it doesn't matter if she gets eliminated early in both seasons. That's all I can think of. Or maybe they really thought they were going to get a season three and wanted to save her for season three, but I don't know. Um, one last thing I do want to talk about Nichelle, uh, when it comes to Nichelle, which I don't hear a lot of people talk about. Um, actually, I talked about this in my first tier list video about season one of this reboot, her personality is so inconsistent, and it's the exact same in this one. Like, sometimes she's pretty nice, sometimes she's chill, um, you know, she's pretty arrogant as well, um, and then sometimes she's just straight up rude and a bitch, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, she actually had, like, unlikable moments, like, when she quits the show, and Damien's like, wait, I thought you said you didn't like Hollywood. She's like, um, excuse me, this is three movie deal, and he's all up in his face. It's like, all right. I feel like, um, I really do like, uh, bitchy mean characters, especially in Total Drama, but they have to be, like, antagonistic, or, like, you know, villainous, or at least entertaining or funny, which Nichelle is none of the above. She's really just rude, and has a nasty attitude for no reason, which is really sad, because I felt like she could have potential. She, if they were not gonna have her be, like, a hero type, like a lot of people thought, they could have had her still be, like, a bitchy girl, but have her be entertaining or more antagonistic, and make her go into the merge. Because I was just talking uh, with my friend on Discord, General Trevor, if you know his channel, um, about how we really could have used, like, a bitchy or antagonistic character in the merge besides just Julia and MK. Like, some sort of uh, villainous or antagonistic force that's not um, having to do with that duo. I especially feel like that would have allowed Julia and MK to go farther because there would have been more distractions because, yeah. Uh, but anyways, that's really all I have to say about Michelle. I could probably go on a whole rant video about how she was such wasted potential, but... Um, thankfully, I don't think I need to elaborate or explain, like, super, super in-depth, because I think a lot of people get it. I've hear, heard a lot of uh, other people sort of mirror my opinions about that, so, yeah. I'm sorry, all this, <laughs> this video is unscripted, so I have no idea what's going on right now. Um, I'm just rambling and trying to get as much of my thoughts out as possible, but if I do a review of this season, I will try to make it a bit more scripted and more structured so I can actually get my thoughts out. Um, I can't promise anything, though, but I do, <laughs> I do have lots of video ideas, um, but I will be starting school soon on the 16th. But anyways, um, next we're going to talk about Chase. Thankfully, this video is already 13 minutes long, <laughs> but um, thankfully Chase won't take much. He's just the second boot, and I think he's, I mean, he could go down here if the tier wasn't called dislike, I guess, but he'll be like, um, wait, yeah, bottom of decent or average, because um, he really didn't do much. He tried in the challenges, I guess, in the first one. Then he flops in the second one. There's really nothing to say. Um, everything I had to say about him is pretty much what I said in episode one already. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like if there's a, a season three, he could be one of the ones that actually gets some development and time to shine. Um, if they do a season three with this cast, which I really hope they don't, but I, <laughs> I might make a parody video about what that would be like, because listen, I have ideas, y'all, I have ideas. Um, you know what, let's talk about his girlfriend next, his ex, Emma. So, Emma is, she's pretty nothing, or sort of invisible, not really important, in the first three episodes, and then, of course, in her elimination episode, she is just, um, horrible. <laughs> How many times have I said something like that? Um, there's no way to describe it. But yeah, she throws a hissy fit, pussy fit, I don't know, what's, the, I don't even know what the term is, I should stop talking. But, um, yeah, in episode four, which is the Squid Game glass challenge, <laughs> why did they keep stealing challenges from Squid Game? I don't know. Um, but yeah, she gets really mad in that challenge because uh, she got all the answers wrong, and so Priya was like, okay, close your ears, and we'll do the opposite of what you say. And so then she got really mad about it, and it's kind of understandable, but like, listen, if that was me, I would just own it. <laughs> I would be like, okay. Like, I would be kind of upset and embarrassed by it, but I'd also be like, you know what? I was flopping, so I understand why they would pick the opposite. Um, 
And I do kind of wish Priya was eliminated in that episode instead. And we could have had Emma go farther, because, I don't know. I really wanted Emma to make up with Bowie. Um, they should definitely do that in Season 3, if they're going to make one. Um, which I would rather have a new cast, because I feel like this cast... I'm not going to lie, this season was kind of, uh, um, not a lot of, um, not a lot of good development. If there were storylines with the characters, I felt like they were really, um, you know, um, not the best. <laughs> I should probably try to be a little bit more positive, so I'll talk about some, a different character that I actually like. Um, I'm going to put Bowie in good tier. Um, despite being, uh, like, sixth eliminated, first eliminated in the merge. By the way, why did they merge after five eliminations? That was so stupid. That was so dumb. Like, merge means nothing. They should have kept it for a little longer. Or if they were bored with it and wanted to do more character interactions, they could just do a team swap or something, you know? Like, it was really dumb. Uh, but anyways, back to Bowie. Um, he should have won season one. <laughs> there's no uh, there's no Bowie ending now. There's no alternate ending. So I guess they're done with alternate endings, which is really weird. Because, you know, I don't know why they wrote the last season's finale so, like, vague. And, like, with them rolling down the, um, rolling down the hill. You know, I've already talked about that. And I think in my episode one video, but I don't, yeah, I don't know why they did that. Um, but anyways, getting into actually what Bowie did this season, um, I really liked his conflict with whether he should cheat or not, and how he eventually, um, decided that, you know what, I'm gonna stick with my boyfriend, Raj, instead of cheating <laughs> in the challenges. And so I really enjoyed that mini arc, and even though he didn't have a lot of, you know, quantity, since he was only in about six episodes competing, um, the quality was really good, and I really enjoyed what they were able to do with him, and new ground, the type of new ground they were able to cover with him, um, even though he was still such a big player in the first season. I actually liked what they did with him, and, um, you know, I really can't say the same for Priya. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Priya, she's going in the dislike tier because... I cannot believe that she made Final Four. Like, if you told me before the season was released that Priya was going to make it to the Final Four, I would just be like, all right, that's it, pack it up. <laughs> like, pack it up, pack it up. Total drama, pack it up, Island. Because this is not... <laughs> like, even the Priya fans, I think even the Priya fans were disappointed with her. Like, the Priya, like the hardcore Priya stands who really liked her in Season 1 didn't even like her in this season. Like, she, like I said earlier, she completely forgets about Millie after Millie's eliminated, she never mentions her again. It's like her that whole friendship doesn't matter to her. She isn't even really... She's, like, standing next to her in the finale, I guess. But, yeah, it just feels like that whole thing doesn't really matter. And um, she falls in love with Caleb. She gets manipulated. And then her and Caleb are, like, so awful once the secret is revealed. Because Priya mopes. But then they, like, they make up, and then they break up, and they fight, and they, like... It's just, like, so, <laughs> so horrible. And so, um, you know, Priya... I thought she was at least funny and entertaining in some of the last episodes, because, um, you know, she is competitive, at least, um, so she was a nice little rival to Julia, I guess, and they made her really unhinged, <laughs> so, of course, I was enjoyed that, but, um, to be honest, if they were going to do that type of thing, I'd rather it be Emma, because, you know, I feel like she has more to do, and Emma's already unhinged, so just let Emma cook, you know what I'm saying, like, let her cook, let her cook in season three, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's really all I have to say, um, Oh, another thing, though, is, um, you know, Priya is supposed to be this huge Total Drama fan, and she even gave Millie a book. She gave her a little study guide <laughs> on how to win Total Drama, yet she fell in love with the Justin Alejandro knockoff, so, you know, I don't know what that says about her game abilities. She also really wasn't that good in challenges. I guess she was, um, she was a pretty good leader for her team when, you know, the teams existed <laughs> for the whole five episodes, the whole two episodes. Um, but then she did a mess up when she, you know, um, uh, took do the opposite of what she thinks with her own boyfriend, uh, Chase. So, you know, that was, that was certainly something. Um, but yeah, I just can't believe, you know what? I should, <laughs> I should have seen it coming. I guess cause it's a reboot. I'm like expecting like flaws that they had in other seasons to not, uh, repeat them. Cause you know, lots of people complain about, uh, Owen or Duncan getting super, super far in all of the seasons. And so you would have think that when they're, you would think that when they're writing the reboot, they would try and take some of that criticism into consideration and maybe be like uh maybe we shouldn't have the character who canonically won last season because <laughs> there there's canon winners now there's no alternate endings she won that's it but we that gets an absolutely nothing <laughs> he gets crumbs um so yeah because of that it's like why would you have her go to the final four and then it's not even a good storyline like all priya needed to do was like honestly she could have even been gone in episode one she could have been just like uh yeah by the way <laughs> i got my money and she, um, I'm pretty sure in episode one of this season, she says, 
my dad told me to put it away for college and earn another million dollars. And I'm like, really? <laughs> we're still going to have Priya do this. Um, I would have much preferred if they were going to have a round for a little bit longer, just have some sort of arc like that, where she sort of learns to be independent from her parents um, of over their control and stuff. But even if, even if she was eliminating episode one, you could still have it be like really easy. All you need to have her do is have her realize something about the competition and like, well, she's in during that paint challenge, just have her be like, wait, why am I still here? Like I already won total drama. That was my dream. And now I feel like I have no reason to be here. So then I would just have her like quit then. Cause then she's like first eliminated. It makes sense why she's eliminated. Cause she just quits, you know? Um, and obviously the contracts, I guess, well, it's, it says if you quit that you owe them a million dollars and Nichelle quit, but I guess she's a celebrity. So it doesn't matter, but like, whatever, just let Chris do away with that for the drama. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah. I guess I don't have that much more to say about Priya. I've already rambled enough about her. Um, next is Scary Girl. I don't really know where to put her. I guess she'd be... I'll put her a little bit lower than Axel, just because... Um, at least I did something with Axel. Um, yeah, I thought she was really funny and entertaining in the first episode, and then she came back in the finale, and... Listen, <laughs> everybody was predicting that um, Scary Girl was going to return as an intern or competitor, or maybe that she would return for like one of those like murder challenges. Like She would be like how Ezekiel was in that one world tour challenge where he was going to be allowed to come back into the competition if he didn't get caught as Jack the Ripper. I thought they were going to do something like that with Scary Girl as well. Um, but that didn't happen at all. And I felt like they were teasing it with her saying that she was going to get revenge and that giant Scary Girl mechanical jackhammer statue as well. By the way, that's the bingo. I'll have to update the bingo as well. I'll have to record a different thing after this to show you guys how the bingo went. Because uh, I don't think I won, but I almost did. <laughs> it depends what you mean, but I'll show you guys that in a second. But um, yeah, she was really funny in the finale as well, Scary Girl. Um, yeah, good quality. Okay, good quality. If you like her, you like her. If you don't, you don't. So that's really it is, because she doesn't have like a real plot. <laughs> she just decided, I'm going to be normal. But then she was like, actually, never mind. I'm going to have my Joker moment. Um, and then she never swore revenge on them. So that's sad. Um, actually, you know what? They should have a 40-minute special. Like, the, the old Total Drama specials like Drama, Drama, Drama Island, and um, Celebrity Manhunt. Celebrity Manhunt. In my top 20 episodes video, I didn't include the specials, but Celebrity Manhunt is probably, like, number one favorite if you include those, because Celebrity Manhunt is so good. It's so good, y'all. It's so good. If you haven't watched it, you should. <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't have watched it, but you should. It's really good. Um, so, yeah, other than that, I'm going to move on to... Da -da -da -da. Who should I go with next? I'll go with Ripper. Um... Ripper is a little bit above Nichelle. He'll be like 15th place instead of 16th. Um, I know some people enjoyed him in this episode. Lots of people were saying, well, he didn't fart in this season that much, so it was great. Um, and, you know, I was glad of that. I was glad that his character didn't revolve around farting. Um, but, you know, when it came to the first season, the parts that I did enjoy about Ripper actually were like his alpha male personality and his brashness, like when he was using Priya as a shield. Um, you know, like, Ripper was giving Revenge of the Island realness in that, you know? It was giving Revenge of the Island vibes, which, you know, is um, sort of a compliment. Um, and so, because of that, I think that um, I didn't like him in the season because they completely got rid of the alpha male stuff. And, you know, he still farted once, and that one fart scene was completely traumatic enough. And he was still gross because he was, like, naked. And <laughs> he was naked in episode two and getting licked by the bear with butter. I was like, yep, no, no, get me out of here. Episode two, I wanted, I wanted to die. I wanted to unalive myself. Um, for the YouTube censors. Um, so yeah, I know I know Ripper has fans. I'm really sorry, Ripper fans. I know it's not fun to have people hate on your character. When people hate on Scary Girl, I don't like it. It doesn't make me feel good, but you know what? You can enjoy Ripper. I just still didn't like him in the season. I also really didn't like how he dragged down Axel um, and made it so that Axel's only thing and only interaction was with him. I thought that was really dumb. And um, I didn't go into the season expecting to hate him. Like I thought he would be uh, decent or average, that's what I thought he was going to be, because I thought they were going to do some, you know, softy arc with him. He was going to have romance. Um, I predicted I predicted that it was going to be with Julia, um, but it was with Axel instead. And I wanted to gouge my eyes out because they just turned into Jeff and Bridget making out all the time. And even before then, I was just like, I know some people like Ripper Axel before. They just started to be really boring, like Gidget, Jeff and Bridget making out all the time. Um, but I was not into it from the gun, <laughs> from the jump, like, Ripper said he liked Axel in episode two, and I was like, that's it, I'm jumping ship, <laughs> like, I, I can't do this, y'all, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, um, so that's really all I have to say about Ripper, sorry if you like Ripper, but that's all it is to me, really, um, da -da -da -da. who should I talk about next, I'll talk about Z, um, he will also go in decent average, a little bit, uh, below Scary Girl and Axel, um, 
I I have a confession. <laughs> I have a confession that I'm not the biggest fan of Z. Like he's a really really popular reboot character. He's definitely I think he's top five popularity. Discord people fight me on that. Um, but yeah, I think he's really popular and um, you know I do think he has his really funny moments. And I think in season one, what really I I I think I just don't like his delivery and humor that much. Like sometimes it can fall flat, especially because he's supposed to be like a purely comedic character. Um, so it's like, you know, he's like, <laughs> every time he says a line, the writers are like, laugh, laugh, please laugh. Um, but I'm not laughing that much. I'm sorry, Z. Um, so yeah, he's just not my cup of tea. But in season one, he was saved by having a lot of iconic moments, you know, like he sunk the ship in episode two, and he was afraid of cows. <laughs> he was afraid of milk. He was disgusted by milk. That was great. That was a good moment, though. I do will admit it was funny. And I also thought it was really funny when he was trying to vote out Z and join them into one big alliance. He had lots of moments like that in season one that made him really good. Um, but in this season, since they didn't try to do that, the only thing he's left with is this whole Caleb and Priya plot, which I did enjoy him in the episode where he's shoving pants in his mouth to try and keep the secret. So I think like episode five or six is when he starts to get better. Uh, then he's eliminated episode eight, I think. I think that's when he gets eliminated. So, you know, he wasn't good for that long, but I did enjoy that little storyline. I'm glad they at least gave him something to do, even if it was a little bit later. Um, but before that, he's pretty useless. And he did, he only has, like, what, he has, like, two lines in every episode or so, two or three lines, uh, before he starts to become plot relevant. And none of it was really funny to me. Although I did like his pet raccoon. I wish they kept that. They should have they kept that in only. Um, so, yeah, that's all I have to say about Z. Uh, da, da, da. I'll talk about MK next. I could put her at the top of good tier, but I'm just gonna put her in her, put her in the carry tier because I loved her and Julia in this season. Here, I'll put them. I'll talk about both of them right now. Um, I loved her and Julia in this season. They were both an amazing duo. Um, the way they just started liking each other instantly from episode one, I felt like it was kind of it was kind of out of nowhere. But you know, I can't really complain that much because I feel like they were just such an amazing duo. Um, they were really funny, like, when they did the Shining reference, like, <laughs> I screamed when I watched that in the car, I had my headphones on, we were traveling back from somewhere, um, and so, yeah, I really loved that, I really loved how they're both, um, and, you know, <laughs> people thought they were gonna be in a lesbian relationship, they thought they were gonna get together, and honestly, I kinda wanted that to happen, um, but it didn't, but who knows, you know what, just fan fiction, <laughs> fan fiction away, uh, we can have it in fan, um, you can like whatever you want, um, yeah, I hope Terry Guren doesn't get death threats for the fact that they um, were quote-unquote queer-baited. But you know what? MK is totally gay. <laughs> Let's be honest. We know 100% MK is gay. Um, I will accept no evidence to the contrary. Um, okay, but actually talking about the plot of the show for a second, what actually happened in the canon, not to Lulu land. Um, MK, MK, I was a little bit disappointed by her near the end. Um, but I really feel like she was still really good for the time that she had. I wish she went a little bit further. And even though Julia is actually, spoiler alert, my favorite character from this season, um, I do wish MK was the main villain because um, Julia was kind of already like the main or I guess side villain, um, secondary villain antagonist of the first reboot. Um, so it felt like kind of a retread. So I would have liked MK to have her time to shine, especially because like, once MK gets busted for cheating, she really doesn't do much besides just kind of interact with Julia. Um, but Julia is the one taking the reins, you know? Julia gets everyone eliminated. She gets Bowie eliminated. She gets Nichelle eliminated. Um, she's also the one who contributes to Z's elimination. So she's just, like, going on and on and on. And she was a little bit overpowered, which I'll talk about her more. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a few seconds. But, um... With MK, it seems like after the cheating thing, they just didn't know what to do anymore after she got busted. But I really, really think they should have had um, Julia, you know, if Julia was going to be making these big moves, Julia's like, oh, I'm so good. I'm ruling this game. Um, then I would have MK steal Damien's idol. Because first of all, it makes sense because MK is already, that's already part of her character that she's like sneaky in a pickpocket. So why would you not have her be the one to steal the idol? Like, that's what makes sense. Whew. Anyways, I got a little bit heated there just because I was like, what the fuck? I just remembered that that's like one of her main character traits is being a pickpocket thief who is really sneaky and good at stealing stuff. So I don't know why she didn't steal the idol. And then use it on Julia. I think that would have been amazing. And then have Julia like almost blow up. But then be like, you know what, girl, it's fine. <laughs> and then have them kiss. No, I mean, <laughs> what? Um, yeah, I think they, I think MK should have had her time to shine. But um, yeah, I really like some of the lore we got. Like in, I had a headcanon. I guess that she was like an epic gamer in the first season and she actually said that she was a gamer in this season so we got that when she gets eliminated she's like there were three things that I hate about this game <laughs> and that is that I have to do challenges and I have to do stuff and that I have to and I hate people 
So you know what? She got she was proud of herself at least for getting far. So I'm glad. Um, but I do wish she could have been the main big bad. Um, a lot of people are saying MK and Raj should have been in the um should have been the final two, and I agree with that. I that, that's what I was hoping for when like before these episodes were released. Uh, that's what I was hoping for. But anyways, uh, I think I've said all I want to about MK specifically, just by herself. So I'll talk about Julia next. Um, everything I said about MK, um, some of the stuff about it, like, they were really entertaining together. They were both really, really funny. The Shining joke, <laughs> scream, like, it made me scream. That was one of the best uh, jokes from this season. Um, but when it comes to Julia, um, I really did like a lot of her big moves. Like, um... Honestly, it just depends on how much you like her because lots of people were criticizing her or turning on her um, in the last few episodes, saying she was she had plot armor, which I don't I don't think plot armor is the right way to describe it. I think she was just very overpowered, um, and yeah, she was just a little bit too overpowered uh, because she, you know, in the first season, uh, I never really got the impression that Julia was like a strategic, manipulative mastermind. Um, I thought her main, like, I thought Bowie was, like, the secret strategic one, and then Julia was kind of the more brawly threat one, and she did try to manipulate, but, you know, I never got this vibe that she was, like, some master manipulator and could really do that. Um, but then in season two, they kind of portray her that way, like, she's a master manipulator, and she's really good at challenges. So, it just kind of seems like she's really overpowered. Um, it just seems like she's really overpowered, and it's kind of out of nowhere, but you know what? I can't complain, because I still really loved her this season. Um, once it got to the final episode, she was the only... After MK was eliminated, um, Julia was definitely the main character where I was like, okay, she needs to at least make it the finale. Um, even though she was my favorite, I didn't want her to win because, like, I, I, you know, I understand how storytelling works. <laughs> shade shade to the people on Twitter who... I don't even use Twitter, but my friends show me stuff on Twitter all the time uh, that the Total Drama, is talking, Total Drama fandom is talking about. Um, people were, like, mad that Julia didn't win because they were saying all signs pointed to her winning, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Like, what, what do you mean? Like, they treated her like every other Total Drama villain that gets eliminated, like, fourth or third. Like, they're really bad. They're very plot-relevant, obviously, but, you know, they're the villain, so they're not going to win. And, um, uh, you know, Heather in World Tour was the exception, not the rule. That's a really good quote to explain that. And not only that, but she was the hero in that season particularly. Um, but Julia's, like, the main antagonist, so, like, at least, like, the villain of the season. So I don't know why you would... I don't know why people thought she was going to win. Um... By the way, that finale episode was really good, <laughs> by the way. And I'm actually going to save Wayne for last just because he, spoiler alert, you know, he won the season. Um, actually, is there anything more I want to say about Julia? I'll think for a second. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have much else to say about Julia. She was just super entertaining. And I did enjoy her being, like, very, very, I, it was she's just super entertaining to watch her. Like, she is completely dedicated to the game, and I respect that. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to say that. It's not Julia's fault. <laughs> it's not Julia's fault that she had the god play, uh, that she was, you know, god playing and overpowered. It's just that everyone else was dumb, uh, including this guy right here, Caleb. Um, this will be another rant right here because during most of the season, I would have put Caleb here, like low, decent to average, because I was kind of like, eh, I don't really know what they're doing with him. Like, I feel like he's. They made his personality kind of like the exact same as Priya's. So I was like, okay, that's kind of redundant. Um, but other than that, uh, these last five episodes or four episodes, however many were released, really made me hate him because <laughs> he's like, he, his personality is so inconsistent as well. Like they cannot write him consistently for the life of them. I don't know why. Um, Cause like in the beginning of the season, he's like, I'm going to manipulate Priya into being in an alliance with me instead of just asking her. So I don't, you know, that, that was dumb. Just ask her like, especially after Millie was eliminated, like bro, just ask her to be in an alliance. Um, but yeah, after that, he's like, when he he makes the duel with the deal with Julia to vote out was it Raj or Damien I think it was Damien maybe, um or maybe it was Raj whichever one, and um so he makes this deal with her and then he's like no Priya I can't go back on my word once Priya figures out and he's like because that's really dishonest and I don't like deceiving people I don't like being dishonest I would never do that and it's like bruh, like is this the same character who like was unashamedly manipulating Priya for like a long time. And it wasn't portrayed as like a, oh, I'm going to be honest now. It was like, it was portrayed like, yeah, that's always been part of his character. Like, what? Like, this is like the final six, the final five. Why are we just learning this about him now? Like, why, why are we only learning about this now? And it's not even true. Like, it's just straight up alive. It was just a plot convenience to keep Julia in. And so, you know what? I'm going to say that Julia slayed that and it's Caleb's fault for being a dumbass. And um, yeah, him and Priya, I... They were, there were some moments where they could be cute in the middle of the season, but, like, 
once it got to the end, they were so toxic. Like, they were just on again, off again, fighting. Now they're making up. Now they like each other. Now they don't. Um, especially on Priya's end. Because Caleb keeps, like, making stupid-ass decisions. And so that's why Priya was mad at him. So it makes sense that she would be mad at him, honestly. But, yeah. I just did not like that. Um, they tried to... I'm glad... I'm really glad he didn't win. They were trying to do... I was worried they might do some zero-to-hero thing. Which obviously could work if Caleb was a little bit better. Um, and by the way, I'll... If you didn't like Caleb in the season, if you would have him in this bottom tier too, you cannot tell me he would not be better as a villain. Because, <laughs> like, I want Caleb to just be a villain or, like, antagonistic or at least have a grudge against Bowie or something. Like, we should have seen that and have him try to take out Bowie as well. Um, but, yeah, he just didn't. And I think it would have been much more interesting as antagonistic or at least take some different route with him. Because they just made him, like, smart, dorky, awkward. Like, they just made him exactly like Priya. That's his personality. Other than the fact that apparently he's super honest, even though he's not. So, yeah. <laughs> I thought my main rant in this episode would be about Nichelle, but no, it's about Caleb, so that's as good as it gets. Um, next is Raj, who I'm also going to put in the good tier. And um, da -da -da. let me just rank the rest of them real quick. So Wayne would be third, Raj fourth, Bowie fifth. And um, da -da -da. these three right here, Scary Girl, Damien, Axel, they could be tied, uh, but I'll put him here, I guess. Uh, so I'll talk about... I'll talk about Damien first. Um, so... Uh, when it comes to Damien, uh, he was pretty uh, disappointing, I would say. Not irrelevant, because he did have some screen time. It was just, for the first three episodes, he was dealing with that whole Millie plotline. And, uh, you know, he forgave her, I guess, so that's good for Millie. <laughs> no one else forgave her, though. Uh, they'll only find out after watching the episodes that Millie um, got forgiveness from Damien for trying to literally kill him. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, she didn't try to kill him. She just absolutely could have. Thankfully, it's a cartoon. But, um, anyways, um, Damien starts to pick up near the end, like, near the merge. Like, he wins the first merge challenge, and he's, like, really determined. And he showed off that he was, like, really into some Wizards game. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Is that a Wizard 101 reference, question mark? Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, like, is that, like, World of Warcraft? Or is that, like, like tabletop? It's, like, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> it's, like, which is it? Is it on the computer or is it in real life? Like, I want to know. Um, so, yeah, when it comes to Damien... Um, he started to pick up then, and I was like, okay, okay, we might have a Damien getting competent arc, being more confident in the competition, like he was uh, at the end of last season. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Uh, he finds the immunity idol even better. I was really glad for that. Um, but him finding the immunity idol, I thought that it was he was going to play it, or he was going to get it stolen, and it was going to be more like a memorable moment, and that it was going to like make his character better, and he was going to be more involved in things. Um, but then he gets uh, sixth place, I believe, which he's also sixth place in this tier list. So look at that. Um, but yeah, so he gets sixth place and the, his elimination was really, uh, I guess, rushed is the word to say. I don't know. It came out of nowhere because he's just like, oh, by the way, Damien, you're eliminated. And he's like, no, I have the immunity idol. And then Julius Merks and then he has to leave the island and it's like, OK, that was not good for Damien's character at all. It was just a way for Julia to vote out Priya in the final four and it's like like you need a re like is it that hard to try and find a reason to vote Priya out like she literally won last season like what do you mean <laughs> like what do you mean isn't that hard to try and write her out you have to idle her out um so yeah Damien was a flop in that aspect but um he still was pretty charming in the season I just really feel like we should have seen a more confident Damien he did kind of regress a little bit and then he got better um he was at least confident in the competition in the merge episode but then after that he kind of went Mm, I don't know. He was good in the um, the memory game challenge as well. He was pretty determined in that. And that episode, I was like, oh, Julia Damien rivalry. Um, but you know, I feel like in this season when something intrigues me, it just means they're gonna get eliminated. So Damien gets eliminated after feuding with N Julia. I guess he didn't learn his lesson from being, you know, with his best friend Nichelle. You know, his best friend Nichelle. Um, <laughs> um that was a joke. Um, so yeah. I was a little bit disappointed with Damien. I'm glad he did have his good moments, but yeah, he really could have been so much better. Um, so that's why he's there. Next, I'm going to talk about Raj. This minute's 40 minutes long. This video is 40 minutes long, um, but that's fine. I hope y'all are sticking around. Um, but Raj right here, um, I think Wayne is above him just because Wayne made it a bit further and had, you know, the whole finalist type, and I really did like that. Um, but when it comes to Raj, I did like him a little bit more than Wayne for most of the season because he, um, he was a little bit more involved in that whole cheating plot and it felt like okay raj could win because he could be like the main uh, protagonist then uh, conflicting with julia the or and mk who are like the main antagonists um but that didn't happen but yeah 
I just liked him a little bit more because he was more involved in that and had more stakes with Bowie, and I felt like it was a good plot line. Um, but then after that, he kind of goes back to his normal self. Um, although they did they did uh, differentiate Raj and Wayne a little bit in the season. Um, in the first season, you know, there obviously are differences, but is that a rat? Okay. <laughs> Raj is like the more emotional and empathetic one. Like in episode two, I think Wayne laughs at one of their teammates getting absolutely wrecked in <laughs> in the uh, basketball challenge. Um, but Raj is laughing. It's only Wayne who's laughing. So you know that shows that he is. Um, that shows that Raj is a little bit more empathetic, and Wayne's also a lot dumber than Raj. Somehow Raj is still really really dumb, but Wayne is even dumber. I swear the, there's a rat. Y'all, I think there's a rat in my room, <laughs> but this video must go on. Um, I'm putting my legs up so I don't have to deal with that. Um, hopefully it doesn't run across my feet. But anyways, talking about Raj, yeah, so that's why I liked him a little bit more um, And uh, at first. Uh, but I like Wayne now, and that's who I'm going to talk about last. Um, so Wayne wins the season. I, I did like his win. I felt like out of those three who were in the finale, Caleb, Julia, Wayne, that he was the best uh, winner option because, um, you know, I like Julia a lot more, but, you know, narratively it makes sense for Wayne to win. You know, you want um, the good guy to win and Julia, um, I mean, antagonistic or slightly mean characters can win, um, but they should not win if they're literally just like <laughs> a completely horrible person like Julia, you know, that's just how I think if they don't have some sort of like, you know, like winner arc, like she doesn't have a winner plot, you know, like she is the force that they are fighting against, you know. Um, yeah, uh, Wayne winning gave, Owen vibes from TDI, and I really liked Owen winning TDI, I thought it was good. Um, both him and Gwen are really good winners, so I don't really care which one is the quote-unquote panel winner, or which one you prefer, because uh, I think they're both good. Um, but when it comes to Wayne, uh, he did have that energy. Um, he wasn't as, like, relevant as Owen, I would say, but it was still a good win, it was a feel-good win. And I did say that, um, actually, I don't know if I said it in a video or not, but I definitely have had the sentiment for a while that um, the they should try to have, like, a more... Um, chill like comedic winner who doesn't necessarily have a quote-unquote arc because Wayne doesn't have an arc um I guess you could say him going on without Raj is an arc but that lasted you know one episode <laughs> um, by the way that lonely sequence with the song playing like that was so peak that was so peak for Wayne that was his winner moment right there like I should have known he was gonna win from that moment on um so yeah I really like that and he was pretty funny this season he's very charming you know all that and I really did like him winning so if you're a Wayne winner hater and you wanted Julia to win Listen, I love Julia too, but it's just how it is. Wayne was the best winner there, and I'm just really glad that Caleb did not win. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's all I have to say about uh, the tier list. So I'm gonna move on to the um, I'm gonna move on to the bingo card now to show you guys my bingo and to show you the update on that. I'm pretty sure I flopped, but I almost got a bingo. Okay, I almost did. So you know. All right, guys, this is my bingo card from the last episode that I made. I mean, last video. I'm thinking too much of total drama right now. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. Um, but here's with the predictions. I'm just going to go through them real quick. It says rebot and not reboot, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, this first one, all pre-merge boots will merge this time except Scary Girl. I flopped that, so I put red. Michelle got eliminated. Um, and it was especially floppy because there were only five pre-merge eliminations, not even six. So it was really sad. Um, one of the players will quit. I got that right because of Michelle. Uh, Chase will be a pre-merge boot. I was correct. MK and Caleb, antagonists of the teams. I flopped that. Uh, pre and debut all together. We'll get together, flopped that. Um, some pre-merge eliminations unexpected. I said yes because I did not think Michelle was going to get eliminated. Um, this one says Wayne or Raj will outlast the other by a fair margin. I just put a question mark because I said a fair margin. And, you know, they're only, like, they're really not that far apart. Like, they're, they're one episode, two episodes apart from when Wayne wins to when Raj gets eliminated. So, I don't know. If you count that as a correct prediction, then I got a bingo here. Uh, but if not, I flopped. But that's okay. <laughs> I still I still got some of them. Especially some of the really random ones. Um, Axel, Damien, and Nichelle have big roles. Um, they did not. <laughs> Especially Nichelle and Axel. Um, this one says someone will help Axel or Nichelle get over their quote-unquote problems. <laughs> and I put a question mark, but I think it is a red X. Um, technically, Ripper did help Axel a little bit to open up, but I don't really count that. Um, this one I'm really proud of. <laughs> Tapeworm or Jackhammer referenced. Um, it's a green because they actually, I think, for some reason, I think they did mention the tapeworm, but I know for a fact that Scary Girl's jackhammer was referenced in the Human Pinball episode. There was a giant robotic Scary Girl with a jackhammer, so I, you can't say I'm not psychic. I am psychic, y'all. I have psychic powers. Um, anyways, Damien finalist, I flopped that. Uh, Priya targeted as a threat. Did not really happen. 
I mean, maybe they talked about it at most, but they didn't really actually do anything about it. Um, Ripper will have a soft side exposed. Yes, he loves poetry. Actually, no, he doesn't love poetry. That's Axel. <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, that's one good thing about Axel. She does love poetry. You know, she got she got that at least. Um, Z will do something smart. Red. <laughs> red, red, red all the way. He lasted till the merge and he still didn't do something smart. Like, I was like, well, he did not do anything smart. Um, Julia romance or friendship 100% because she had it with MK. I was, I, I mean, I was kind of expecting them to team up, team up. Um, but I really did not think they were going to go so hard into it. Like, I thought Julia and MK were going to have some sort of alliance before the season was released. But I didn't think it was going to go, you know, I didn't think they were going to go hardcore with M. Coolia, you know, M. M. Coolia, M. Coolia. Um, you can tell I'm really tired. Uh, and this last one is Emma Delvelps without Chase. I put a question mark, but I think uh, one of my friends said, nah, that's a red X. <laughs> that's a big red X right there. Because uh, she didn't necessarily develop without Chase. I was thinking she would just have, like, some sort of plot line that, doesn't revolve around chase um but the only episode she was in where she was not doing something related to chase um where she was actually relevant was episode four but i don't know if you would really consider that developing uh but if you do it would be um but it's mostly this one up here this question mark that's mostly uh debatable so you know uh i got a bingo for <laughs> for those of you who think this is a green mark instead of red i got a bingo so that's good um I will hopefully be posting a more in-depth video about this season, but I hope you guys agree with my thoughts. If you do or don't, go ahead and leave a comment to let me know what you thought about this season, because I really want to see people's opinions with having to surf the Reddit. <laughs> and so, yeah, I really, really thank you for watching this video, and I hope you leave a like and subscribe as well, because it really helps the channel and helps me to grow since I'm so underrated.